So tonight we're looking at five targets on the lunar surface. We're going to use an amateur telescope with a high resolution camera and we're going to produce stunning imagery. We'll start with this huge mountain range. We're going to travel into this geological fault. We're then going to go to this strange mountain range that's in the middle of a flat lunar plane. We're then going to go to my favorite Apollo landing site. This is a Apollo 15 landing site. We're then going to have a look at this flat plane and what appears to be the ghostly outline of a crater. We'll then find a cliff on the moon that's actually also inside a ghost crater. And as a special bonus feature, I've just noticed that my favorite lunar crater has just been perfectly lit. So this is the telescope we're going to use tonight. This is a Celestron CPC 1100. This is owned by the lodge that I'm staying at in Namibia. Uh, so it's an 11 inch mirror. And I've put in the back the high speed planetary camera and we've got a times two power mate. So that gives us a 5.6 meter, 5,600 millimeter uh, focal length. And that's what gives us this fine high resolution views. With the high speed camera, we'll then capture thousands of video frames of the lunar surface of each of these features. And then we'll pass that through the software. The software then rejects the frames that have been blurred by the atmosphere, by the turbulence within the Earth's atmosphere. We'll then stack and process the sharp frames. And that's what reveals all these hidden details. So this is gonna be so exciting. We're gonna use this amateur telescope. We're gonna capture this high resolution imagery, but more importantly, we can actually use it to understand what's going on on the lunar surface, all the features and the layers upon layers of lunar geology. So I've made myself my cup of tea. You can't be observing the moon without a cup of tea. And we've started off, we're at the Lunar North Pole. This is the Lunar North Pole. So I'm gonna use the hand controller, navigate our way down. Ah, oh, there we go. Here we are. Oh, look at that, that is so cool. Normally when I'm observing, I'm worried about dark adaption, you know, making sure my eyes aren't getting dazzled. But of course we've got such a bright moon. I love this feature, you've got the mountain range. And you've got this cleft in the middle of it, this lunar feature. And I must admit the seeing's not perfect here. The, the, the skies are wonderfully dark. There's no light pollution. It literally is a portal zero sky. Wonderfully dark skies, but the high resolution, <laughs> the, the side we're trying to do tonight is not so good. Okay, let's see if we can capture that or get some nice imagery. What we've got here is we've got two parts of the, of the lunar surface and they've actually collapsed. One side separated from the other literally where the two surfaces, the two parts of the moon have sort of moved apart, leaving this sort of rip in the surface. Inside there, because you've then got a low point, is where there's been a lava flow, and it's actually cut. The lava's actually cut like a river across the surface. So just get that properly centered. There we go. Just check my focus. I find I'm always tweaking my focus just to make sure all that's better. There we go. Right, let's get a capture going. That is so cool. I love the fact, you know, and this is what's amazing. We've got an amateur telescope, amateur brain, and yet we can resolve features, high resolution imagery on the moon. Right then, let's go to our next target. So in this, this is a huge impact basin. Actually, if I go to the wide field of view, We'll zoom out a bit. This is called the Imbrium Basin, the Sea of Rains, Mare Imbrium. And it's actually a huge, huge impact basin. And this crater here, this large crater here, is called Archimedes. You can actually see it's full of lava. You would normally have this sort of much more chaotic filled floor but there's actually been some lava flow coming in or i don't know if it's coming through the floor or coming through the walls but it's completely flat there's no features whatsoever on the floor completely flat and featureless and yet to the south we have this sort of arc of mountains you can actually see we've got a feature here so there's actually an impact basin there's an impact feature and this is the rim that is poking up. And we're now left with just this arc, this little crater, crater wall, crater rim. There's all that's left behind. 
Right then, let's jump down here. This is the Apennine mountain range. Now this is where the Apollo 15 astronauts landed. And I can just see jumping in and out of the sea, there is actually a, a feature called the Hadley Rile. So the Hadley Rile is actually a volcanic feature. What's happened is lava flows have punched through to the surface. They come up through the vent and the lava has actually flowed and it's actually cut into the lunar surface like a river. And that's what we can see just down here. And this is why the Apollo 15 astronauts went there. And what a sight that must have been. Can you imagine flying in over those mountains? Wow, what a view that must have been. And it's quite cool we get to actually see this. Right, let's get another capture going. Okay, let's carry on moving south. So let's follow the mountains. We're going to go down here. There's another crater here called Arosthenes. I don't know, it's all Greek to me, but you actually see we have the ghostly outline of a lunar crater. We actually have the ghostly glow appearing there on the screen. Now what's happened again, we've got an impact on the lunar surface. We've then had subsequent lava flows over the top, but lava flows aren't solid. They're full of voids and over time, that lava then settles, those voids collapse. And so it actually leaves that sort of ghostly glow uh, of the original crater that's now buried under kilometers of lava. Wow. So that's the jackals. That's the jackals calling in the desert. So we have an original crater. We have the lava flows that have buried it. They then collapse slightly, leaving this sort of ghostly glow. And then on top of that, we then have this new fresh crater landing on top of it as well. Right, so let's get a capture of this one. Let's move on south. Ah, oh, there we go. Now this is one of my favorite lunar features. This is called the straight wall. And the Latin is a rupees recta. And again, it's a bit like our Alpine Valley. We've got these two geological levels and one side of it is collapsed and it looks, it looks to be like a, like a cliff. You know, you've got this black shadow across the surface. It's called the straight wall, but it's neither a wall and neither is it particularly straight. So this phase of the moon, we get to see it in darkness. We get to see it casting its shadow. In two weeks time, the moon phase will be switched around. We'll then have a bright white line rather than a shadow. We'll actually have the, the, the wall will be catching the sunlight. And it is, it's a geological fault. The two layers of the moon have just slipped apart. And that's what's formed this cliff, this, this wall, the straight wall on the moon. Now, another thing that's quite interesting about this lunar feature is that it too is inside a ghost crater. We can see the outline of the crater, uh, the original crater called Thebit. And we can actually see that crater, that ghostly outline buried in the lava flows. So what looks to be just a, a feature on the moon, we've got the original crater that's now become a ghost crater. We've had the two levels that have slipped. We've now got this cliff that's formed on top of it as well. And then we've had these fresh cratering that's then appeared on top. There is also another one of these riles, another one of these rivers cut by the flowing lava. You can just see it. Right, so let's move on. Oh, I haven't started my capture. Let's move on further south. Now it's worth saying that what we're seeing here, this is called the terminator. This is the difference between the lit side of the moon, lit by the sun, and the dark side, the bit where the sun hasn't yet risen. And the reason why it looks so dramatic is of course we have all these shadows uh, and that's what gives it this dramatic sort of topography. If the sun was right overhead, it would be very hard to spot any of these features. That's why it looks so dramatic. You've got these crater floors that are completely black with shadow, yet the rims are lit by the rising sun. 
So we'll move on further south. Oh, I love that view. So this crater is called Clavius. And if you've watched 2001, A Space Odyssey, this is the one where they have the lunar base. It's one of the larger impact features on the moon. And what's quite cool about this, and this particular view, is that the floor is still within shadow. And yet the crater rims, the, the, the crater walls, are lit by the rising sun. Clavius also has a little line of craters inside it. You can just see three of them here on the screen. And they're lit by the rising sun as well. So it's an absolutely beautiful sight, really stunning. And then we'll start our capture. Looking at high resolution pictures of the moon, live high resolution views of the lunar surface. Drinking my cup of tea, listening to those jackals that we heard earlier. We hear the crickets. Absolutely beautiful. So this tour was such good fun, being able to explore these lunar features, being able to analyse and see those different layers of lunar geology. I really hope you enjoyed it too. If you found it useful, please do check out the Patreons page. And my thanks as always to the patrons. Thank you for your continued support. And I'll wish you clear and steady skies. And we'll see you in the next video as we explore the night sky.